on, everybody? Welcome back to Copy and Headphones. My name is Caleb. My name is Trevor. This is a podcast where brothers talk about brother things. Brother Trevor, things. How you doing? Yes. I'm doing well, bro. How's your day going? It's going well. I think there's a little lag right now, so let's uh, try to tough that one out. It's good, bro. I'm sore today. I'll tell you that much. Yeah. I was hooping. Hooping yeah, how was day. it? Caleb Caleb hooped with uh NBA professional basketball player, Matt Bonner. It's how true. cool was that? Yeah, bro. It's cool. He just pulled up, man. He pulled up to the court. Lee Ellis was hosting his his 2020-20 tour in Toronto, so I had to pull through. And then I just turn around and there's Matt Bonner. So we end up talking about hip hop and I ask him if he wants to run with us. So he comes and he runs with us. It was fun, bro. I'm super slow, but jump shot's still good. You feel me? So I didn't do great in the 3v3, but knockout, bro. I was I was steady with it. it was so time, the, the question of the day, did you guys win? We did not win. Dang. dang. Uh, it was to seven. How do you lose with the NBA player on your team? Dude, listen, bro. I'll tell you this much. Guarding grown men is a lot harder than guarding high schoolers like they were bigger faster stronger i'm never clowning on booch for getting lost in the pick and roll again because they (laughs) kept putting me through that it was tough but next time next time i just didn't get the ball that much on offense i got the ball like twice i don't even think i got a shot up in that in that game matt that's that's why you lost yeah that's why you lost because you weren't shooting nah bro that's exactly right like that's it's crazy because I, my plan was just to like work in the post the whole game yeah, yeah but then when you pick up a six nine nba player like Maybe. obviously i'm gonna go out probably to have to switch roles yeah, yeah but no nah, it was a blast man it was a blast it was very fun Heck yeah bro that's i'm gonna awesome. try to like gather up some footage and throw it out there on the social media so hey y'all follow us at coffee and headphones instagram TikTok, subscribe here on YouTube or wherever you're listening to the podcast. But enough of that. Uh, let's get into what we're actually talking about today. You want to tell them? Let's do it, bro. Yeah, it's something that uh, a little different. I've heard from a lot of people that we've been talking about basketball a lot. Uh, yes, this is a podcast where brothers talk about brothers sing, so suck it up. Uh, but today we're going to switch and we're going to talk about The Office, one of the best shows ever. We're going to do the season rankings, uh, top to bottom. We're going to start with number nine and work our way to what our number one is. Um, I think you should go first. I think I should go first? Okay, yeah. so let's just do it. We're going to take it nice and casual today. Also, bro, why are you so rude to our listeners, man? Why are you be telling them <laughs> to suck it up? They're the reason we can keep doing this. That was that was specifically for a couple people um that happen to also be friends of mine that uh text me and so we talked about basketball. So okay. everybody else, thank you for supporting us. Uh Josh, Jaden, you guys can deal with it. All right. Go ahead, Caleb. Oh man. Okay, so worst to best. I'm gonna start off in my number one spot. I have season eight. You should um, say number nine spot. Number nine spot. Thank you. First off, number nine. I have season eight. Yeah, I try to keep up with that. There and you go. The reason is, I mean, honestly, eight and nine are kind of either or. But I'd put eight at the bottom because although it does have some bright spots, such as Robert California, who's controversial, but I like him as a character, it's not great. There's a lot of controversy on this season. They didn't really have a direction after Steve Carell left. I didn't like the Florida arc. I know some people did, um, but I didn't. I mean, the Aaron stuff was good in it, but other than that, like, leave it all, man. Um, season eight, there's just no standouts, no great episodes, so it's last for me. Yeah, I mean, that's valid. I, uh, I also have season eight, but for different reasons. I I like Robert California, but I feel like that was the structure they tried to move the show forward with, and it just did not work well for me. Uh, my man's way better on Blacklist. Uh, he was good, though, good enough, but it's like trying to find Michael Jordan's replacement, right? 
Like it's not gonna happen. Uh, your team's gonna tank, and that's sort of what happened on season eight. Um, the Florida arc was weird to me. The gym stuff um, with I always forget her name. Um, Kathy. Yeah, I felt like that was just sort of thrown in there. I didn't understand it. Um, sort of how I feel about the Pam stuff too. But we'll get to that. Uh, but yeah, season eight is last on my list as well. Hundred percent. Fair. Um, okay. Next up, number eight. Uh, I have season nine, of course. And, you know, it was, here's the thing with season nine. It's like for season eight, there was not really like one particular issue I could look at. It was just all kind of lackluster. For season mm-hmm. nine, it's kind of opposite where it's like very specific storylines that I did not like. Obviously, the Jim and Pam controversy, It's it was so unnecessary and so forced um nobody liked it you know they, they especially at that point no michael scott uh they were like the pulse of the show yeah and yeah, you're gonna 100%. mess with the only thing that's been working it just didn't make sense the oscar affair stuff wasn't really that great either um and they made andy suck they just took andy's character development and threw it out the window and that was really the biggest l that this season took uh but there was a very strong finish you know and they have the most underrated episode, in my opinion, The Farm. Um, mm-hmm. when I was supposed to launch the backdoor spinoff for a Shroot Farms show that never came. I really liked it, but it had bad ratings when it dropped. I love that, though. I could take all the Shroot Farm stuff in the world. And then, of course, the finale and the episode before the finale, um, two of my favorite episodes in the whole show. So that kind of brought it up past season eight for me. But in general, it's not better. Yeah, no, I agree. I mean, and the thing with like the storyline with Jim and Pam, I completely like understand from like a real world scenario, I guess. Jim goes off and gets this nice job and Pam's feeling alone with kids and blah, 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 blah. But they tried to make it more of like a drama than a comedy. And I just didn't like that at all. I don't think a lot of people did. I also have season nine as the second worst um mainly because of pam and jim like they were like like you said crucial at that point um but i love the finale michael scott comes in says one line everybody tears up um it's one of the only finales that i've watched multiple times of shows they're usually trash um that one was really good everything sort of came together um yeah i mean i just don't think that one episode can redeem the whole season though uh so definitely number nine for me right yeah and we should have said this off top just in case you weren't smart enough to figure it out spoiler like for the office in this um if you haven't seen the office yet you gotta (laughs) yeah just stop and go watch it i don't know the office is one of those i hear a lot of people like oh i can't watch it blah blah but it's one of the greatest shows ever all right um um, can i do number three you mean number seven there was yeah number seven there was something else i was gonna say about season nine but i oh brian why does the cameraman get involved at this point when they watched Andy float out into the middle of the river and <laughs> <laughs> so many other things that have happened before that they let Roy come in and try to kill Jim. Like That's that true. was just stupid. They ruined the continuity of the show. So that was another That's thing true. that I hated. No, I understand trying to get them in front of a camera, but no, no, it was like, they were trying to remind people that, this it's whole journey day. was a yeah <laughs> and i mean i liked i really liked the panel episode was that the finale or no that was yeah yeah so i mean again the finale <laughs> yeah. is pretty much all it was yeah. um number seven on my list though is gonna be season one this is where i think we might differ a little bit i don't know um it was first off it was the shortest one it was like five or six episodes, uh, but it's the start of everything. So it was amazing. Um, but it was just a little, the creative juices weren't fully flowing yet. Um, I think they were a lot more scripted in season one than they were as time progressed. Um, I really liked it. It set the scene for a few things, but um, there wasn't a lot of like, 
character development and the supporting roles outside of like Michael, Pam, Jim, and Dwight, and really not as much Dwight yet. So I I liked it. I mean, it's not like season eight or season nine, but it's right. definitely not towards the top of my right. list. Yeah. No, agreed. Uh, same thing for me. It, it's <laughs> okay. season one. Yeah, I'm not going to repeat you too much. Yeah, they're still figuring it out, and it was short. There was some great episodes. Like, the basketball episode is great. I love it. Um, but, like, they were taking a lot from the British show at this point, and it wasn't mm-hmm. really its own thing yet. But – uh, definitely better than seasons eight and nine because Steve Carell and uh, they had their original writers on there too. But yeah, definitely not quite as good as these next few seasons, in my opinion. I'll go ahead. Number six, I have season six. Uh, okay. No, no big arcs really, and not like a ton of character development throughout the season. But it's still really good. I think this season was just like a really solid. They had their their uh, structure down at this point. I think this was a bit of a longer season, um, but there's, you know, good episodes, but throughout this was the Sabre takeover, right, was this season. Um, and it was really cool to see, like, some of the gym as manager stuff. I think that was all this season, even though he didn't stay there very long. It was just a nice dynamic that they kind of switched up to play with. So I'll give it number six you know all of these from here on out are ones that i really enjoy rewatching. fair enough this is we're gonna be different on this one so thank god it's exciting i know i was like okay at some point i have season seven so i really like season seven um i do think some of the other seasons are better uh but season seven was great it has one of my favorite episodes dwight k shrew acting manager um that's probably one of the best episodes ever um and then it has like obviously it's the last of michael so it has the last dundies um threat level midnight come on does one of the best episodes of any season um so that's what i have well number five for me is season seven i think a lot of what you said but here's something that i have written down Michael Holly greatness. You know, Michael finally, you see him mature. This is what he's been building to all series long. He's kind of had a lot of failures and a lot of like growing pains, but he finally got where he wanted to be. He found the love of his life. And it's just the most endearing version of Michael Scott overall, who again is the pulse of the show at this point. So I really enjoyed it. I'll put it slightly above season six for me. So it's in my number. Five. I like it. For number five, I have season two. Okay. Wow. Season two is amazing. Um, I love it's not like I don't know. When I go back and rewatch and restart, there's like season two through five is usually what I watch. Um, but season two had uh the first Dundies, I think. Um, there was all a whole lot more character development. Um We learned a lot more about the cast, the supporting roles, and Michael Scott was probably at his most ridiculous in season two. Um, He had the booze cruise, which is one of the funniest episodes of that season. Office Olympics, which I loved. Um, And then Take Your Daughter to Work Day, (laughs) which is a funny, funny episode. But yeah. Uh, We're on number four? Yeah, number four. Okay, number four. For me, I have season four. Uh, this was one that used to be my favorite season. Um, but just as I've gotten older and my humor has changed a little bit, it's still great. And this is where it starts to get really hard for me. These top four, they're all kind of like top tier television. Um, it starts to get just really hard. That's what she said. So as, <laughs> as I kind of like look through the remaining seasons this one is one that was a little bit differently paced because of the writing strike uh longer formed episodes but not as many episodes this season i thought a lot of it was good fun run is one of my favorite episodes ever this is the season finale where holly gets introduced um but in general like you know 
what was it? What are some other episodes on here? Oh, uh, there's dinner party. Dinner party. Dinner yeah. party. Maybe the most iconic episode. The, the wilderness one, I think. With yeah. Michael and yeah. Dwight's watching them. Yeah. No, it was really good, man. But it's it's number four for me. Fair enough. I have season six. Okay. Uh, Ooh, season so six. Ranked... Season six kind of high. Yeah. I season really six like... above season two is really um, a hot take, I think. Yeah, I so I was those are the only two that I kept switching around. Um, and the only reason I did season six above season two is because of one of the worst, most cringy, best episodes of any show I've ever watched, Scott's Times. Uh, and Date Mike, I love Date Mike. Date Mike, that nice episode's so funny. Um, and then I don't know that whole storyline with Donna just cracks me up. Um, yeah, bro. I mean, Jim and Pam get married in season six, I think. Uh, they also have their first kid in season six. Uh, it's a very, like, monumental season for The Office as a whole that continues it, like, throughout the the last few seasons. Yeah. yeah. Okay. Well, now we're in our top three. Top three. Top three. So for me and number three, I have season three. And I me think too. this is okay, cool. There's great arcs in this season. Um, you know, the whole like merger. That's like one of the best arcs in the whole Andy. series. Andy introduced Karen is um, I don't some mind people prefer Karen. Karen, some people <laughs> don't, but she's cool for this season, I think. Um some of the greatest quotes ever. The white you ignorant slut comes from this season. <laughs> uh, and then, of course, great like Jim stuff, Jim and Pam stuff. They're both kind of uh, growing. And then eventually at the end of this season, the very last scene, they end up together. So, yeah, number three for me. Yeah, number three for me, too. I really like Jim leaving and coming back. Um, the merger is hilarious. Tony up on that desk cracks me up every time. Um, the way they do their little tour, my man's remembering names. He said pepperoni pizza, <laughs> pepperoni Tony. Um, I don't know. And this this was also the um, Electric City song, right? Electric City. Yeah. Uh, Jan and Michael, and is this the season Jan gets fired? No, no. But Jan and Michael. That's later on, but Jan and Michael. This, yeah, th- wait. This is a, she gets fired at the finale. On the finale. Yeah, yeah. In the office, and he said, I "Casino did not Night, that. probably the best finale in the series." Besides, Casino maybe the Night's last one. Hilarious. Um, Holly. Wait, is that that's season two? My bad. Not Holly. Yeah, I don't know. Yeah. You're good. I was. No, the finale for this one is very that's different. Where they go to. New York. Yeah, when they're competing for that job. Yeah. Um, but the beach games when Pam goes off is in this episode. Andy's floating away. Where were you First then, Brian? Seen... First time I've seen Stanley try at anything. Uh Ben Franklin episode. I mean, this one is probably one of the funniest seasons it's a great season. of the office. I think it's 100%. a lot of people's favorite, and I understand it. So all right, bro. Number top two now. Top two. Okay. Number two for me. I have season two, much higher than you did. Uh season two, man. Like you you touched on a lot of it, so I'll keep it short, but it still had that early dry humor, but they had confidence to make it a lot more fleshed out rather than like season one. And yeah, this is the one casino night, you know, like I said, one of the better finales on television ever. Um, and there's also got the marijuana episode on top of a lot of other ones that you were talking about earlier. I just think like this season is one that you could just throw on an episode and watch with someone who's never seen The Office. Mm -hmm. Whereas some other seasons, it's not necessarily like that, but I love this one, bro. It's very easy, casual watch through whenever you're going back and binging it. You need something to play while you're sleeping. This is the one I go to. Fair enough. I I feel that way about this season, season five. Uh, season five is it was close to my number one, 
Um, but it has the weight loss episodes, which are some of the funniest story arcs in the office as a whole. Um, it has a lot of Holly and Michael and Holly leaving, going to Nashua. <laughs> Did Daryl touch you? Um, I I pretty much picked it because of that line. Let's be yeah. honest. What? <laughs> Oh man, dude! No, it, it's hilarious. As a Moroccan Christmas, when Meredith is like, "I'm not an alcoholic," um, I it has some of the best one-liners I've seen on The Office. It has a blood drive. Oh man, woke up, his whole life changed. Michael Scott Paper Company is this season, so to see Pam and Ryan and the way he flipped the script with Charles, I. I don't know. That's got to be. It was close to my number one. Yeah, I understand that. All right. And it is my number one, season five. You know, a lot of things you said. I think this is a hot take to have number one, but I love this season. The Michael Scott Paper Company is the best art in the show, in my opinion. And Company Picnic is great for all the happy <laughs> couples, are the eventual happy couples, you know. They're shutting the branch down. Uh, <laughs> Letcher, Letcher Circuit is hilarious. Two-parter, stress relief, like you said, wonderful. And then one of my favorites all time, this one doesn't get talked about enough, customer survey. So good. What that's is the, that one? That's the uh, William M. Butlicker. Mr. Butlicker, our prices have never <laughs> been lower. Hey, you got a dog there. Yeah, I got a butt right here. He's flared out since. Hello. Uh, but, bro, yeah, season five, man. I love this season. I think this one's a little bit longer, too, because season four was shorter. Um, mm -hmm. But everything hit, man. This is a great one. Like, standalone episodes and the arcs, so good. I agree. I mean, that's why I had it number two. But there was no way it was taken number one. I've probably seen it over 20 times, uh, which sounds crazy. Season four. It has to be. Season four is what I rewatch all the time. Um, we already named a lot of the good episodes. Uh, but that whole time period of Jan and Michael, and Michael's just in this abusive relationship, um, it cracks me up, man. I think that's the did I stutter one too. Yeah. Um, which and some people like, some people season, don't. It's the first season with Jim and Pam dating. Yes. Um, it has fun run, so I, it has uh, Branch Wars, <laughs> which is one of the funniest so episodes. Funny. Um, Survivor Man's in this one. That's yes, what saying right here. that's what I was trying to find. And then it has the job fair too, which a lot of people didn't like, but I thought it was funny. You know what's a very underrated episode? The chair model. That one's was so good. I love that one. Chair model. Is that when they're deciding the chair? That's when Michael falls in love with the girl in the catalog. Oh, yeah. She passed away. Dead. <laughs> she was high, apparently. Joy said, I found her. <laughs> yeah. yeah. Solid. solid, man. Oh, man. What a great show. I'm happy we'll never get more because I don't want to mess with it, but also... It would have been great to get a little bit more. But, you know, if you haven't seen The Office in a while or maybe never before, go throw it on, man. It's uh, it's aged well. It has. Um, I think it's maybe not PC enough for some people. Um, but it is still one of the funniest shows out there. I think it's on Peacock now. So. It's on Netflix yeah. if you're in Canada. Another successful pod. How about Another that? successful five. Hey, man. Well, we appreciate y'all listening to us talk about The Office. If there's anything else you'd like to hear us cover, holler at us, shoot us a DM on Instagram or TikTok, and uh, subscribe to us here on YouTube or wherever you listen to your podcast. Trevor, anything else you'd like to say to the people? Yes, there is. Go Nuggets. <laughs> I'm not... Uh, what? <laughs> All right, y'all have a good one. Goodbye. <laughs>